Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of the Freshman 15 College Football Podcast. Shout out to everybody who caught the live stream last week on Twitter. Also, a thanks to Pat and Roman for stopping through to talk Huskies, Longhorns in the preview. But tonight I want to talk about the semifinal games and the preview of the national title between Washington and Michigan. Uh, let's just kick this thing off proper. Tyler, I know it's getting late, man. So let's talk about this thing. Tyler, my man, what is up? How much? It's the uh, the first week of January and you know, we couldn't have asked for two better games. You know, the past couple of seasons, we've seen a blowout here, a blowout there. But, I mean, these both these games came down to the very last play. I'm ready to dive into them. Yeah, man. So, let's kind of talk about first Alabama-Michigan. Um, now, I know you're probably celebrating a little bit seeing Michigan uh, lose. I'm hurting seeing Alabama. I'm sorry, Michigan win, Alabama lose. Yeah. I'm, I'm good either way. I know you're, you're probably having a hard time. Um, but talk us through that game, man, because it was actually exciting at the end, too. Yeah, so uh, like you said, I, I this I couldn't win on this one because I I I despise both teams so much. Um, but like, like I said, the 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 winner of the game that we're talk about later was is the the team that I want to win the national championship. But you know, you have you have this team in Alabama who throttled Georgia in their in their championship game, and then they get mm-hmm. projected into number four, and then they're facing Michigan, and. You kind of you kind of come to the conclusion that like they never really faced a defense that was like this. Like they they faced Georgia, but Georgia's game they were they were down and their defense wasn't as dominant as they have been all year. Uh, but but mm-hmm. Michigan, they they can get to you with their front four and their front seven. It makes it really easy for their back end guys. But they shut they shut down Burton and they for they basically forced Milro to do uh, what everyone knows he wants to do after his first read is gone and run. And that ult- that ultimately comes down to the 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 demise of this team, you know. In the second half, they go there, there. There's times where there's bad snaps, and that ruins two drives. Uh, Milro just has to fall on the ball, and then when he gets in that sticky situation, uh, and you know Michigan, they have the second best passing defense in the country, only allowing 150 yards a game. They only allowed seven touchdowns all year passing. Uh, so that is an elite passing defense. We're going to talk about that later with this upcoming matchup. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so with that, you know, they, they force Alabama to be one dimensional and Alabama has a very good stable of running backs and they, they quietly shut them down as well. Uh, and then they forced it into Milrow's hands. And so when it comes down to that, that last play, like, like Corum took it over. I, he did the same thing against Penn State. He did the same thing against Ohio State. And he's done the same thing yep. against Alabama. And it's crazy. And it's almost been... The, the Penn State Ohio State game was the same exact play. This one was a little bit different, uh, but he just showed his his will and tenacity to 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 get into the end zone to put his the, he put that team on his shoulders because McCarthy didn't play well uh, very well this, this whole game and that second half that offense was very stagnant. So you go into the last play of the game and we're in overtime here and Tommy Reese, I I don't understand why you make. You 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 make your quarterback one yes he is one dimensional for the most of this game but why would you run him straight up the middle why wouldn't you put him to the outside where a he can use his athleticism to maybe make a guy miss or b give him you know one or two outlets that he can that he can hit instead of trying to run a QB draw right up the middle and w- a, a, with a bad snap as well it's it was mm-hmm. uh, and you had three timeouts called right before that. And that's the best play you got. Um, you know, you, you shot yourself in the foot. It, it, it's, it, it, it kind of just shows, uh, like his his maturation was there throughout the season, uh, but in 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 this, uh, it, Nick Saban and Tommy Reese got out coached by Jim Harbaugh. There's there's no other way to put it. Uh, in in that in the end of that fourth quarter, in in overtime, Harbaugh out coached Nick Saban, and you know they they're the number one team in in the country. Regardless of controversy that's happened, you know they they have to come out and perform on the field. They come out and do it week week in and week out, and they always find a way to do it. And they have one more game uh, to see if they actually get on top here. Yeah, man, I think the theme with Michigan all season is that they're they're unified. You know, what I'm saying like that's that's been the factor because they've kind of bought into this like NWO type of villain role, and but it's unified them in a way that's kind of inspired them a little bit i think I'll, I'll say that like i think that's kind of where they are right now yeah um you talk about like the plays of the game and really what mattered i go back and i look at it and mccarthy wasn't great like we've talked about 
uh, JJ McCarthy a lot, man, as far as how good is he really? Is he right. a product of the environment? Which he probably is. But I think he made enough plays in the passing game to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Like that throw he did to uh, Morris, that was big. I mean, that turned the tide a little bit. You, you kind of want to see where the game was going. That turned the tide around a little bit. Um, you, I even think about like the play to, uh, uh, I think it was Quorum, I think the fourth and two, right? Yeah. Like, that's big time. That, that's, yeah. that's, that's, oh, that's how you yeah. got to. That's like a gotta have it play. I mean, and actually, the thing is, he got him twice though, because the flat happened in the red zone for the first touchdown pass to Quorum. Yep. They went back to it again. You guys lost sight of him to the right side this time. Yep. So again, it's you know, it's a tell. I think the way they even gendered the communication, like I think it might have came from like a bunch set sort of too, and they, he kind of leaked out from that. Like I think this is kind of what you're seeing. Like they, they he out schemed him a little bit, out coached him a little bit, and he, he had his number in the right times. Um, and I do think, man, just watching the game at the end. Quorum is is that guy, man. I don't think we saw much Donovan Edwards either. I think it was oh, a heavy, like, hit a big drop, heavy handed. For, yeah, he hit a big yeah. drop game. Yeah, and I think it was like, okay, we're gonna ride our guy to win this game. Pause. But I think that's kind of what made the difference in that. And I think you mentioned the bad snaps that really killed drives, man. Yep. Um, however, however, I will say this in defense of Tommy Reese, which I will never do normally, in defense of recent saving for that call. The one thing I saw is one, the guy tripped and fell back, which he fell into to Melrose. Two, they had success with that inside. Uh, I think it might be like, like an inside zone draw, like an inside trap run. I don't even really know how to define it, but they had success on it earlier because they got a lot of chunk plays right down the middle. They would kind of they would fake the the, uh, the read option to, to the outside. He goes right down the middle. So from two yards out, is it the best play? No, it's not. But had it been successful? Yeah, it was, man. And I think we talk about, like, is it the right play call? I think it's more so execution than anything else. Like, we talk about the the bobble snap or the bass snaps. I think it's just execution, man. I think they just didn't execute at the end of the game. I think that's just the key. I mean, are they a tick better than, um, I'm sorry, is Michigan a tick better than Bama? Yeah, they are. They're, they're better. But the plays, when it mattered in the crunch time, execution, that did them, man. I think that that's what it is. Just not not being as sharp as they have been in years past. And and again, Michigan being unified together, tight, and coming out with the win, man. That's that's what it really mattered. I think. Yeah, I think I think one of the biggest things was well in, in the first half they had five sacks alone on Milro. I think they had two more in the second half. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and Graham, their their big defensive tackle, he he stepped up really big. But what I noticed is they always had a guy coming off the. You, know, you and I talked about this offline when we talked about like. Uh, people stopping like the, the push tush, you know, and we talked about hey, like Miles Garrett would be awesome coming around, or JLK coming around the outside. If you if you watch Michigan, if you go back and you watch them, they did this exact thing to Milrow. They always had a DB ready to hit him within the first two yards. When they when they knew mm-hmm. it was going to be a run, it was bam, hitting him right off the edge, and that gets into a quarterback's head after getting hit so many times. And this is another thing with you know Michigan's DBs; they love to hit because they trust their front seven so much. Uh, they mm-hmm. know that when when that ball's coming, uh, you know they're not afraid. They're not afraid to to go hit that ball carrier, and they they forced that um, uh, that that fumble by Milrow early in the third quarter too, uh, which really turned the tide of the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and even like like the last drive, I think uh, again, man, I, I kind of want to spot like Corum. We talked about him a lot this year, man. But he really was the anchor to end that game, man. And I think the running game was what's going to serve them going forward. Yeah. Um, so now let's flip to the other game. I, I think for me as a fan, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the more exciting game was UW in, in Texas. L- let that be what it is. Um, so, you know, we had, you know, our friends on the show, we had Pat come through, Roman come through, talk about the matchup. But when I watched that matchup, man, I feel like the game could have been a boat race early based on what we saw Washington doing. Like, I felt like they controlled the game for the entire, entire course of the game. until maybe late the end, late third quarter, late fourth quarter. Um, I mean, we all know who the talk of the town is after that game, right? Like, we all know what, like, what the main stories of that game. Yeah. Like, let's not <laughs> bury the hatchet. Um, but I'll let you go ahead and start it off because I talked about him enough this season. Oh, so it, it's Michael Michael Penix Jr. You know, uh, he nice. was on on display for everybody to see, and you know, I think mm-hmm. he ended up with like 450 yards passing. I mean, it was it was. It was kind of expected because we we talked about it with with Roman and, and Pat that both of these defenses they're susceptible to the to a big passing attack, uh, but mm-hmm. I mean just just to go off the way he did and then you know like I, I had asked Roman like hey do you think 
do you think Mike's going to do some, you know, design runs and it was even willing to run and lo and behold, third and fourth quarter, he's, sure was. he's doing it. And, uh, you know, he, he put, he, he put that team on his back. Uh, they're, they're running, the running backs played, uh, really well, as, uh, as well. And th that defense really stepped up, but you know, you, you just can't say enough about, about, about Michael Penix because, you know, he, people yeah. talk about his wonky throwing motion and he's a lefty. He's at the two ACL injuries and it's just like, he's overcome all of that. And he's like, here I am. I got one more and I'm going against, uh, so Michigan's the number one total defense in the country. Uh, they're the number two passing defense in the country. They're the number nine rushing defense in the country and the number one scoring defense in the country, 10 points a game. So it's going to be Washington's number one pass attack versus that Michigan team. We're going to see if Michael Penix can do it again. It's man, this is straight on strength, and um, and I, I guess the because we had the big story is the quarterback, right? The yeah, quarterback yeah. is a very, Both I think to me at least, as a yeah, I mean yours too, actually uh, yours too. Um, so I think he's a looking at Penix, right? He's going to be the, the talk of not only the, the the CFP season, but you know draft season as well, and a lot goes into it because we know that there's a lot of stock into these games when it comes to prospects. Yep. Everybody knows that. Um, but what, what I will say is, though, as great as he was, he was fantastic. I think Kalen uh, DeBear, as far as his aggressiveness, the way he matched that up, the play calling, the timely play calling, even, and I feel like their running game could have gotten off a little bit better, you know, but I think they did all the right things. Even what I'm surprised with Washington watching them play was how well they played, I think, against the run at times as well, and even their, their pass defense. I think at the end of the game, they got really sloppy. I think they found like it was in the bag. They got a little bit laxed a little bit, and I think to their credit, Quinn Ewers found his way as well. Like he made some big time throws, made some big time plays. Mm -hmm. uh, they got Jatavian Sanders going. I think their their downfall might have been not getting uh, Xavier Worthy involved in the game enough. Yeah. But, and I think the only thing I, I see with the Washington, the only thing, the only little thing that's kind of reared its head back from the games against uh, Washington State and even some games with Oregon is the discipline when it matters the most and the coaching aggressiveness to not get things done because. That whole sequence that happened at the end, the entire sequence yeah. shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have happened. And, and I question even running the ball with Dylan Johnson on, on third down. Just take the knee. Take the knee, man. Just, just mm -hmm. take the knee. If you take the knee, then that's not even a factor. I mean, he's going to play on Monday, which is great, but he was injured on the play. And now what you're seeing is that they have more time to even score that, that, that possession, even have a chance to score. Honestly, man, if you – so I watched the broadcast with – um with Colt McCoy and uh, Harry Douglas. Okay. And Colt was in shambles because he knew what was happening. He knew that it was kind of going away from him slowly. He knew it was <laughs> going to happen. Uh, as soon as Johnson got hurt and had 45 seconds to do something with it, plus the penalty on the punt, yeah. it was just, okay, it, it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And it was just, again, discipline in the last minutes, coaching as well, and just the entire drive. But, I mean, shout to um, the UW secondary to hold it down when it mattered the most. Yeah. And again, all, all class goes to guys like Quinn Ewers, um, Jatavian Sanders. Just UT had a great season, man. I, yeah. I think for them, and I talked about it on Twitter before. I said, well, you know, who needed this game more? Like for the programs beyond this season, who needs the game more? And a lot of people said uh, UW did. And honestly, mm -hmm. the way they played, I agree. I agree. I mean, it felt like like did they know this is like the the big hurrah for them. Um, but I think I mean Pat won't say it, but I think Texas might be back. Just by virtue of what they've done so far this season, they, they yeah. should be back. Yeah, so the, uh, Texas, so they should be in the West next year, I think. Yeah, West. So they'll be, be playing Alabama every year. Should be. Perfect, man. Perfect setup. <laughs> um, all right, man. So to, to wrap the show, I want to talk about just the game itself, the like, the game of games, the matchup. In the national title, we have UW and Michigan. Um, I have a take on this game, and I feel a certain way, but I kind of want to hear you out first. So as you can see from my attire, my my dog shirt, my you know my hat, I'm I'm going for the Huskies here. Um, so like I, I, I kind of went over it earlier, but you know pe the passing offense, uh, Washington is first. Michigan's defense, they're ranked first in total scoring defense. Uh, you know, and it's 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 kind of crazy like how all of this like how good Michigan's defense is. Michigan's uh, passing defense, they're number two in the nation, 150 yards a game. Washington. 123rd the nation, 267 yards a game. Rushing defense, Michigan's ninth, 93 yards a game. Washington's 43rd, 137 yards a game. Scoring defense, 10 points a game for Michigan, 24 points a game for Washington. 
Uh, mm-hmm. so, and then so you, you go down like Michigan's offense is, is not very good uh, compared to what compared to what Washington's offense is, but it's the defense that keeps them in games. They you know they do short fields, uh, they force timely turnovers, mm-hmm. and so when I when I look at this game, I say can 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 Michael Penix can he move around in the pocket enough, uh, improvise on certain plays when when we know. Michigan's gonna get home. They got home plenty against with against Milrow, and he's a, he's a more mobile, more mobile quarterback than Mike Penix is. Is he is he gonna be able to buy enough time to, for his receivers to get downfield and get open? If you even scheme them on screens, like I said earlier, those DBs aren't afraid to come up and hit. They're gonna be there right away. I think the the one de- the defender name is like uh, Samersol. He's number zero. He's their safety. San- Sanders Sanistrell. Sand, Sanders straw something yeah it's something like that but yeah he, yeah it seemed like when you watch when you watch those high when you watch the Alabama versus Michigan game he was there almost every single yeah he got beat on a long rushing touchdown but after that he's the one who he's the one who hit Milrow he's the one who forced the the fumble on Milrow and it's like mm-hmm. he's always he's always 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 there and like I said, and those guys aren't afraid to hit so if if Michael Penix and that offense can buy enough time for you know that that three-headed monster uh, to to get open and and to make contested catches because we know they're going to have to. I think Washington can win this game because I'm not sure that Michigan's offense will be able to to uh, they, they're going to move. I think they'll move the ball, but they will not be able to keep pace with what Washington can do. So that's why I think, if, like I said, if they if they if they're able to uh, just just buy enough time for for Mike to get his receivers open and like make contested catches a lot of yak yards i mean that's that's the way that washington wins this game and that's what i come back to like when i think about this game i come back to that like i'm i'm confident i mean look the part lays are sent I'm, I'm confident that this game is a advantage huskies and you talk about michigan's past defense right this year and where they're ranked and i'm like thinking to myself and this is not me hating i'm not trying to hate whatsoever man but you're in the same conference as Iowa, you know what I mean? Like you're kind of yeah. throwing the, the passing game down to begin with. So that's part of what's happening here. Yeah. So I think that's one factor in that. And I think about, you know, like the Huskies defense is a lot better than we thought it was. And they've gotten mm-hmm. better. Um, mm-hmm. You know, shot to Cam, shot to Rom talking about Braylon Trice. He's made a big difference too, you know, on the interior. Again, Michigan does not have Zach Zinter. He's out. So you've lost your interior lineman. I think maybe like one of their best linemen. I saw the Keegan, he's like the, their best lineman. He's not there for anymore. And the way they've played on the outside, on the perimeter, I feel good about Jabbar Muhammad. Like, I think it's a really, really good defense they have to go with their offense. And we talk about schemes and systems and coaching, but they got horses, man. Like, I don't know any team in the Big Ten that has the same firepower with the quarterback, like the combination of everything, everything. Offensive line, quarterback, three-headed monster receiver, even Jack Westover, who I think might be an X-factor as well, tight end. They've got so much stuff to, to deal with. And the quarterback is so assured of himself and confident. And again, he's an uber talented arm talent. Like that's facts. So the guy has an insane arm talent. And I think now even the, 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 the cognition of playing quarterback, he's killing it right now, man. Like he's seeing the matchups. He's like, he's hitting every single thing. Then I look at Michigan on their side and this is not me hating, man. But the O sometimes I feel like it's smoke and mirrors too. Like they have to, like they have to gadget play their way into scoring drives. So that makes sense. No, they like didn't. they have to give you a trick play here. Like it's it's they gotta kind of like it's kind of like deceive you to get points on the board because the quarterback's limited. I just think that's one thing they can't really mess with. And whether or not they they want to, they're gonna have to. You're gonna have to score a lot of points. You have to. So I think that's the key and. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm going Husky all the way here, but I do think that they just don't have enough firepower to keep up with that team. Yeah, I, I agree. And the the one, the one, I don't remember which broadcaster said it, but I was when I was watching that Michigan Alabama game, they referred to Michigan's defense. Uh, that Nick Saban said it was a lot like a Ravens defense, which it very much is. Yeah. You know, you watch you watch the Baltimore Ravens. You know, John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, all their brothers. And you do see a, a very canning resemblance there, and it's, uh, you know, and like I said, they they're front four, they're they're gonna get home, and they're very they're mm-hmm. very good, uh, and that's like that's the true test. Like when we say, you know, football's a game inches, and and football's one in the trenches. It's this right here. Like, 
Washington's Washington's O line. Are you going to be able to do this against this defensive line? Uh, because they because that defensive line, uh, you know, they just they just basically wiped the floor with Alabama, who usually has a very good offensive line and it's littered with offensive talent. So I mean, we're gonna we're gonna see the best of the best right here, mano a mano. You know, strength for strength, and that's what's most exciting about this because it's two completely different styles. It's a styles clash, and you know, it's it's what everyone's going to see, and we're going to see it from from now on because, you know, Washington, welcome to the Big Ten. It's 2024. You're yeah. a Big Ten team now. <laughs> and I think that's honestly, man, that's the coolest part about all this is the contrasting styles have come together. To I mean. It's, it's almost storybook in a way, man. Like the, yeah. like the Pac-12 is gone. But in their last season, their last season, they produce what could be the national champion of college football. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like the most thing that's like bittersweet in it. And, and again, we talk about like narratives and storylines and football. But really, man, I mean, think about the, the, the last hurrah for a conference that people had champions, man. Like think about all the great Pac-12 teams from the years. Uh, Pete Carroll's uh, USC Trojans, like, like the Reggie Bushes of the world. Um, the Oregon teams that, that played there, like all those uh, storylines of this conference have culminated in a national title game for, of all teams, Washington. Yeah. Crazy, right? From, from yeah. a quarterback who's in, in the Big Ten. Yep. Like, it's it's a cra- crazy situation, man. I think that's that's the coolest thing about it. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah. This is a, for, for the last version of this uh, CFP. It's been good, man. It's been really good. Yeah. And, and, so. I don't mean to extend this any longer, but to go off like your when you say you know Washington can be a little bit dis, uh, undisciplined, Michigan second in the country with only uh, three penalties per game for 26 yards. Washington, 132nd out of 133 teams, seven and a half penalties a game for 72 yards. So, so they like are you the said, they can, Yeah, they're second to last in the nation in penalties. So. Yeah, that's that goes that touches on your undisciplined thing, and that's coaching, um, you know, and that's that's mm-hmm. kind of like, that's that's a matchup that we have to watch within this matchup it is the coaching. So yeah, it, it's exciting because I think after this game, Harbaugh is going to the NFL anyways. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's for a different time. Uh, another yeah, for sure, man. But guys, once again, hey, thanks for watching. As always, guys, hit the like button, hit the sub button. Uh, you know where to find Tyler at Cryptic Ghost too. You can find me on Twitter at SDQ Flight Crew. And thanks for joining us on the Freshman 15. And as always, peace. Peace.